Stop letting the enemy paralyze you and mute you and muzzle you and tie you up. Stop. You have been enriched in every way. There's a grace of God that is poured upon each one of your lives, every single one of you. There's power in you speaking and releasing things. The Bible says you open up your mouth and he will fill it. That perfect will of God has already been accomplished on the cross. That perfect will of God has now been released unto you. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 1 says, Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and uh, Suthanes, our brother. It says, to the church, the church meaning the ecclesia, the church is the set apart ones. And we're set apart by the smearing of the oil, right? That's the anointed ones. We are anointed. Say, I'm anointed. I've been set apart by the smearing of oil. In the spirit, even today, that's exactly what just took place. Understand that Jesus Christ, Christ the anointed one, literally poured out over you today the anointing of the oil of the Lord. You're being smeared with the anointing of the Lord today because you are the ecclesia. Say, I'm the ecclesia. I am the ecclesia, the church, the ones that are set apart. Say, I'm set apart. So to the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified, who is, who is Paul speaking to? But to those that are sanctified. Say, so I am sanctified. Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus, called to be saints. You are not a sinner anymore. You are a saint. The Bible calls you a saint. When you have received Christ as your Lord and your Savior, you are a saint. Do you know what that means if you're a saint? It means you're holy. It means you're, it means you're, you're separate, set apart. It means you're pure. You're a saint. This is who God says you are. It's what God calls you to be. So he says to the church, to the saints, that's us. He's writing to us. He's writing to us. And it says, with all who in every place call on the name of the Lord our God. And oh, do we call upon his name. We call upon his name and it says, um, in every place call on the name of Jesus. Jesus, God our salvation. Jesus, God is my salvation. Hallelujah. Verse 3, grace and peace from us. God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what's promised to us. Grace, God's unmerited favor. Grace, his power and weakness. Grace, God's provision in every circumstance. Grace. Verse 4. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given. It was given. It's kind of like it is finished. It was given. Say, the grace of God was given to me. I don't have to work it. I don't have to strive for it. I certainly don't have to earn it. It was given. There's a grace of God that is poured upon each one of your lives, every single one of you, the grace for salvation, right? But then there's separate graces that are poured upon you for actually for you to fulfill the call of God for you specifically, that the gifts and the callings of God that he has poured into your life, there's a grace for you to walk those gifts out. There's a grace for you to walk out that calling. It's not your strength it's his it is not your ability it's his and we just keep our eyes upon him and say Lord, Lord I thank you for your grace I thank you that you've called me so therefore I'm equipped I am set apart I'm holy you're holy the world wants to tell you you're other anything other than that right the world wants to tell us we're slimed we're tainted we're this we're that we're sinners no you're holy God says you're holy right and he gives us grace and he gives us peace and we're not gonna we're not gonna uh discard that or, or overlook it or, or not, not focus on it, right? So verse 4 again, it says, I thank my God always. I thank my God always concerning you. One thing that I would encourage you would all do is throughout the week is thank God always for those that come and fellowship here at this church. Thank God for them. As you remember them throughout the week, thank God for them. And it's what Paul did. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Jesus Christ, that you were enriched, hallelujah, which means you've been made stronger than you thought you could, stronger, wealthier. To be enriched um, is to become stronger. It's to, be, it's to increase. To be enriched, it's to increase. It's to become wealthy, to increase in strength. 
You've been enriched, it says, in every way. See, the enemy wants you to think that you have, you've been enriched, sure, 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 but not in that one area. No, that's a lie. He wants you, the enemy wants you to, rem to, to focus on that one area that is very difficult and say, well, you haven't been enriched in that area. That's a lie. If the Bible says you've been enriched in every way, then you've been enriched in every way. And you, when you believe it is when you actually walk it out and receive the fullness of what I'm speaking right now. Let revelation right now just minister to hit home and really minister to them that they have been enriched in every way. That means in every difficulty. That means in every opposition. That means in every situation in home, at your home, at your job, in ministry, in every situation, and everything that doesn't seem to budge, it doesn't seem to move, you have have been enriched. Say, I have been enriched in every way because the Bible says so. And so I stand on the authority of that. That means I've been made stronger. That means I've been made to increase. That means I've been made to be rich. Yes, to be rich. That means you've been made to be wealthy. Yes, to be wealthy. That means you have been made to increase in your strength. Somebody ought to get excited about that. You know, in Romans 12 too, it says, do not be conformed to this world. Right? In Romans 12, 2, it says not to be conformed. What is the world always trying to do in people? Right? People that are listening to the wrong spirit. They're listening to the enemy. They want you to conform. Don't let them cause you to shrink back. You have been enriched in every way. Did we not just read it? So don't conform. Do not conform to the pattern. There's a pattern. A pattern of this world. Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world. But we're going to be transformed. Say, I'm transformed. I live transformed. God continues, continues to transform my mind. He continues to transform my thinking. He continues. But he doesn't do it without your cooperation. So we have to cooperate. When you just want to focus on what you want to focus on, you are excluding yourself from the grace that is readily available. Somebody needs to hear that. Oh, somebody needs to receive that. When you focus on what you can't or the difficulties, you have literally bypassed the grace that is readily available for you to walk that through and to, and to literally gain the victory that's for you. Enriched, made stronger in every way. So, yes, we're not going to conform. Romans 12, 2. We're not going to conform to this world, but we're going to be transformed. So I'm transformed by the renewing, renewing of my mind that, that you may prove, that you may prove that which is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God, that you may prove it. Who's supposed to prove it? You. We are. There's a perfect will of God. That perfect will of God has already been accomplished on the cross. That perfect will of God has now been released unto you. You will prove it. You will make it be shown as true. There's too many Christians that make it be shown as false because their focus is on the negativities of the world instead of God's supernatural power, God's mountain-moving faith. Prove it. Let your life prove the goodness of God. Let your life, and I'm telling you, yeah, there are days that you, you know, you feel down, but don't let those days drag on to weeks. Don't let those weeks drag on to months. Prove it. Let God's word be proven through you. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? Because we are called to be holy. We're called to be set apart. We're called to be saints. And we're called to be enriched in every way. In every way. See, what the enemy wants to do is to keep your mouth shut. He wants you just to have your mouth shut. But I don't know. Jesus opened his mouth. Even to the very end when he said it is finished. Even to the very end. Could he have not just thought it? Of course he could have thought it. But he spoke it. He spoke it. There's power in you speaking and releasing things. The enemy doesn't know what you think, but he knows what, he hears what you say. So there's power in releasing exactly what I'm talking to you about today. The Bible says you open up your mouth and he will fill it. That's a scripture. When you open up your mouth, he will fill it. So we must open up our mouth and let the Lord fill our mouths and stop letting the enemy handicap you. Stop letting the enemy paralyze you and mute you and muzzle you and tie you up. Stop. You have been enriched in every way. You have been enriched. You have been enriched in every way as you allow your mind to be transformed by the renewing. We have to renew our mind so that we can prove that which is good and acceptable. And the perfect will of God. 
So no conforming here. We're going to get right back to 1 Corinthians, but in Exodus 15, 2, is the Lord is my salvation. Hallelujah, the Lord is my salvation. The Lord is my salvation and the Lord is my song. What does Jesus mean? But God is salvation. It's Yeshua, God is salvation. In Exodus 15, 2, the Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. He has become. Hey, it's one thing to be saved. It's another thing to understand that God has become my salvation. He's become. So in every area, it's not just I have a mental knowledge that I have been forgiven of my sins and that I have received salvation. That's good. But has the Lord become your salvation in every area of your life? Have you focused on, the enemy can't touch this, can't touch you. Like he can't, he tries, but it won't penetrate. It won't sink in. It's only surface level. The pain can only go surface level. He cannot penetrate because God has become my salvation. Has God become your salvation? Well, the more. It's a journey, and we are all on it. The more that you press into the heart of God, as we do here every single time we gather, the Lord is becoming your salvation. You're starting to encounter him and experience him in ways that you didn't even know possible. You're pressing into more to the heart of God for you, and you're seeing God's faithfulness. You're seeing God's faithfulness. He is faithful. The Lord has become my salvation. I want you to say that with me. The Lord has become my salvation. We're going we're gonna to read that whole scripture in Exodus 15 and 2. It says, the Lord is my strength and my song. The Lord is my strength and he's my song. And he has become my salvation. He is my God. And I will praise him. Amen. My father's God and I will exalt him. Amen. Oh, look at this. Look at this scripture. I, I just want to stop right here for a moment. The Lord is my strength, and the Lord is my song, and it, and, and it says, and I will praise him. He's my God, and I will praise him. Praise breaks the yoke. Praise, praise will break every yoke, yeah. every burden, but it doesn't stop right there. Yes, praise breaks the yokes, the burdens, the heartache, the difficulty, the oppression, of course, but then it goes further, and there becomes, you become like super strong because God, who is your salvation now, equips you. It's like a, it's a spiritual thing where all of a sudden now you just know that you know that you know that nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop the will of God in you. Nothing can stop what God has started in you because you won't give the enemy that time of day. The Lord has equipped you. So when you praise, there is not just a yoke that's released, but there's something that's released of you going forward, you advancing, of you literally tearing down strongholds, uh, even the strongholds that you didn't even currently see, but you become equipped. And when you walk out of this place and you walk into another, then therefore the enemy sees uh, that you've been with Jesus. He sees there's a supernatural strength upon you. You may not even be aware of it, but the enemy sees there's an anointing on that individual. They've been with Jesus. I can see that they've been with Jesus. I can see that they understand that God has become their salvation, that no weapon formed against them will prosper. I can see. The enemy can see it. You may not even recognize it. You may not. But the, other, the others can see it. But here's the key. You keep on getting filled you keep on pursuing God is the way I'm speaking of today. You keep on understanding that God is becoming your salvation. Then therefore, you will see it. Therefore, you are being equipped and empowered. Therefore, it's not just others that see it. You know it. There is an authority that rises up on the inside of you. You know it. Say, I know it. I know it now. I know it. What do we know? What are they talking about? What we're talking about is we are God's favorite. What we're talking about is that we are God's chosen mouthpieces. We are his favorite. We are his vessels. We are anointed. We're separated from the world. Nothing, nothing, nothing is that the enemy tries to throw your way is allowed to even enter in because we won't let it. 
marked because we know that we belong to him. We know that we've been marked out, set apart, and holy. We're holy. You're holy. Amen. Vessels that bring him glory and honor. Amen. Separate from the world. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. I get excited yeah. about this. And Psalm 28, 7 says, the Lord is my strength. The Lord is my strength and the Lord is my shield. Oh, he's our shield. Amen. My heart trusts in him and I am helped. Does your heart trust in him? My heart trusts in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart, it greatly rejoices. And with my song, I shall praise him. Again, we get back to the song. Our song. Our mouth. Our voice, the words that we speak, that we sing. Yes. Let your praise go forth Amen. and break every wall. Amen. Hallelujah. Going, let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 5. I said that you, are, you were enriched in everything by him. You are enriched. We focused on the meaning of that word enriched, right? It says you are enriched in everything by him. In all utterance and in all knowledge, utterance, what you speak, knowledge, what you think. You're enriched. Don't let the devil have any access. You are enriched by the Lord in everything that you speak and in everything that you think. Thank you, Father. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. And how did they overcome? By the word. Amen. By the word of the Lord, by the word of the Lord, right? And, and, and by also by the blood, of, the blood of the Lamb. So we too will overcome in the same exact way in Revelations 12, 11. So your testimony, the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. Paul is writing to the church. Sometimes people go, oh, this is the greeting. So the greeting, we just kind of brush right on past it. And, but there's something to be gained in every word of God. There's something that God wants to speak. I believe he's already speaking to you through the greeting of this, of this book in chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians 1, right? So even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you so that you come short in no gift, God has given each and every one of us gifts. He says that we are to be zealous of spiritual gifts. Why? So that we can edify others. We're to be zealous. We're to be zealous, uh, to be eager, to, to press into the gifts that God has given us so that we can edify others, that others would be blessed by the gifts that God has given unto you, right? Right? So to be eager. We're, we're, we're to be eager in the things that God has given us, and he's given you gifts. Amen? So I want you to, I'm going to stay here because I think that the Lord is, there's going to be some light bulbs that go on within you. Six and seven, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come short in no gift. So in other words, so that you don't come short. So that you do not, you're not shortchanged. You're not shortchanged. You don't come short in any gift. Say, say, my gifts are to edify the body. And I will not come short in any gift. You've been called by God. You've been called by God. You've been equipped by God. And you are enriched in everything. So that you come short in no gift. Eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to press into more. You're going to press into the revelation of the Lord. You're going to press into the abundance of God. You are going to press into everything God has for you. And you will not be the same. Amen. Amen. You will not be the same. God has equipped you and he's changing you from the inside out. It's a beautiful thing. Verse 8, who will also confirm you to the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you may be blameless. You're called to walk blameless. And he says, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you, Father. You called us to be blameless, Father God, and you are faithful. And so I thank you right now that you have given us that, that grace, that unmerited favor. God is with us. Lord God, you're watching over your word that it will not, it will not fall, it will not fail. I thank you that even in your word here in 1 Corinthians, Lord God, you've called us separate, set apart, holy, 
blameless. You've called us pure. You've called us as your mouthpiece. And I don't know about everyone, but I think most people understand the blessing that this is. What a blessing this is when you know your identity in Christ, when you know that you've been called by the maker of heaven and earth, when you know that God is truly your forward guard and your rear guard, when you know that God is not against you, church. Second Corinthians in um, chapter 9, there's a portion of scripture here that I'm going to read to you. We're called to have abundance in all things, right? So we're going to read some of this, but I want you to look at verse 11. It says, while you are enriched, yeah, <laughs> right? While you are enriched in everything for all liberality, which causes thanksgiving through us to God, enriched. Clearly, that's the word for today. See, you will always be enriched and rich enough to be generous at all times. You know, he gives power. He gives us power to get wealth. Deuteronomy 8.18 says he gives us power. He gives you power to get wealth. In, in 2 Corinthians 9 and 11, it says, you are enriched in everything which causes thanksgiving. Enriched means to be rich enough to be generous at all times. You will always be rich enough to be generous at all times. I want you to think about the word of God right now, which promises you success. Every single one of you. The word of God promises you success. There are some people that believe that we're supposed to remain uh, poor. <clears throat> There's a gospel, that, a false gospel that is, and it believes, and it's a teaching that people give, that it's, it's good and it's to be expected and embraced to remain poor. Like it's a good thing, you know. Um, what's good is that our hearts remain faithful to him. That's good. What's good is no matter how much you have, you're, th you're thankful and you remain grateful to the Lord. You always, and you always keep a heart of, of giving and of gratitude. That's what's good. And that's true. But God promises us success. He promises us increase. He promises us wealth. And it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. As long as your heart remains pure. It's always about the heart. The issue is really about the heart. Right? So here in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, I'm going to start in verse um, 8. Well, no, I'm going to start in verse 6. Let's go up. Verse 6. So verse 6. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves, yeah, say it, God loves a cheerful giver. He loves a cheerful giver. Don't be like, okay, well, I just want to, no, he loves a cheerful giver. Lord, what can I give you today? What do I get to give you today? That's cheerful. And verse 8, God is able to make all grace, which means favor, abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance, that you would have an abundance. Because God is able, say God is able to make grace abound. God is able to make his grace abound to me so that I always have enough and, and abundance. Not even just an, uh, enough, an abundance for every good work. Uh, verse 10, now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed that you have sown and increase. May he multiply and increase. Are you looking right now at these verbs in this, in this portion of Scripture? Multiply. Increase. God wants you to multiply and increase. He wants the seed that you have sown to multiply and to increase the fruits of your righteousness. Then we go back to verse 11. While you are enriched. Remember what that word? Made wealthy, made rich, made strengthened in every way. Remember, you will always be rich enough to be able to be generous at all times because you're enriched. You're enriched. Verse 12, for the administration of this service not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also is abounding through many thanksgiving to God. While through the proof of this ministry, they glorify God for the obedience of your confession to the gospel of Christ and for your liberal sharing with them and all men. Liberal sharing. Faithfulness to the Lord. 
We have been enriched in every way. We have been made to walk in abundance and to believe and to expect that God will multiply, that God will increase, that God loves a cheerful giver. Thank you, Lord. I'm just going to read a few scriptures in 2 Corinthians 9, 8. We just read that you will be abundant in all things. Amen. Amen. Romans 8, 28, that all things work together for good. For those who love God and are called according to his purposes, right? Philippians 4, 13, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, right? Colossians 1, 17, all things are held together by him. All things, all things. Remember, he's enriching you in all ways and he's causing all grace, all grace to abound. Well, all things are held together by him. Your life is being held together by, by him because you're included in the all things, your work is being held together by his hand because that's included in all things. 1 Corinthians 13, 7, love bears all things. And when we walk in Christ, we too will bear all things because the love of God will compel you. And 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, it says, in all things we give thanks. That means every scenario in life. We will give thanks in all things. Whether it's a, a, an easy time or a difficult time, let the praise of God, let the thanksgiving of God, always, always giving thanks, because that is the will of God. It's the will of God. So say, I've been enriched in every way. I've been made rich, wealthy, to be a blessing. It's a spiritual law, you guys. It is a spiritual law. When we come into agreement with the word of God, which of what we're reading, preaching, decreeing right now, when we come into agreement with the word of God, we will see it come to pass. Amen. I've already spoken to you, Job 22, 28, that you will declare a thing. You will decree a thing. You will speak forth a thing. You will speak it out. And as you speak it in alignment with the word of God, of course, you will decree a thing and it shall be established for you. It shall be established. That means it has roots. It shall be established. It is something that is fixed. It is not something that is easily shaken. It is not something that's easily removed. It becomes established. When you speak the word of God, even the word of financial blessing, you become established. Your life starts to take on this nature because you're speaking into existence that which you do not see yet. It's a spiritual law. It's a principle. Just as God said, let there be. Let there be light. And there was light. When we come into agreement with the word of God, and Job 22, 28 tells us that you shall decree a thing. You shall de uh, decree a thing, and it will be established for you. So that light will shine upon your ways. So you know exactly how to walk. You know exactly where to go. The light of Christ shines upon your ways. Amen.